what's up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video uh, and no you have not read the title incorrectly i have ordered a brand new 718 cayman gts 4.0 I thought I'd sit out in the garden and film this one uh, just because the weather's so nice. It's currently uh, Jubilee Bank holiday weekend, so if you hear any dogs barking, apologies. It probably have my own dog start barking in a minute. Um, but yeah, if you watched the previous video about uh, the is it time to sell my RS3, uh, you would have heard me mention that another car had caught my eye, um, and that car was the 718 GTS. Now, I went ahead and reached out to my local Porsche, which is Porsche Colchester, um, and said to them, guys, like, I wanna come in for a chat. Have you got any cars I can take out and drive? Um, and I was very lucky to be able to drive the manual Cayman and the PDK. which was like the best Friday afternoon ever. Um, and yeah, just absolutely love the car, phenomenal car. And we're gonna do a video um, possibly after this, maybe the one after, a couple of videos after this maybe, um, of a full drive and review of them. But yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was absolutely bonkers. The best car I've ever driven hands down. Um, and so it just made sense. I went into the dealership, um, we had a whole conversation around spec after I'd driven them. They also informed me that the Cayman will be stopping production in two years time. Um, and it's going fully EV. It's like, big ugh. Um, so yeah, they're going fully EV. So if you want one, like really now is the best time to buy them. Um, so that kind of makes sense residually, but also for my timing as well, given it's gonna be at least 12 months before it arrives. So I thought I'd give you guys um, a video similar to how I did with the Mustang when we ordered that, um, just to walk you through my spec, the options that I've chosen, why I picked some things over the other, why I didn't spec certain things. Um, and so yeah, I've got my MacBook recording my screen and um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. So uh, we want models 718, I'll go ahead and click configure. These are all the models you can get. You just get the Cayman or the Boxster, Cayman T, Cayman S. But yes, we are going for Big Boy 4.0. Start with personal configuration. So just as standard, this is the normal configuration it comes in, along with uh, the base price, which is 69.6. Um, and this is just a, a kind of bog standard car this is what you would get if you added no options at all uh, this is just the base configuration so colors <laughs> i had seen uh, a shark blue car in the dealer which i'll overlay a photo of now i spoke about that in the previous video um which looks incredible but it's very very close to the turbo blue on the new 8y rs3 um and so it's lovely, but it's not metallic. And I kind of felt like if I'm gonna go for a blue or a red or a green, I'd want it to be uh, metallic. So you've got a whole host of standard colors. These are all no cost. Then you've got some metallics. These are all 632. Um, I mean, these are just the options that were provided in the UK. Um, gentian blue or gentian blue, however you want to say it, is very, very nice. But having had darker colored cars, like, as soon as you get it a little bit dirty, you see it and the swirls are a nightmare. So I just, that was a no for me. Um, GT Silver Metallic was very high up on the options. Um, looks very, very nice. I just thought, I don't know. I feel like GT Silver Metallic is something that a lot of people spec on these cars. And so I just wanted something a little bit different. Um, we'll just quickly show you what the Shark Blue looks like which is, I mean, it's incredible. The, the, the configurator does it no justice at all. It's very bright in person. Um, let's get back to the outside. But yeah, that is shark blue. Arctic gray is what we have gone with. Um, I was very torn about crayon, but the crayon is almost like a bit of a, a taupe color. 
strange. Um, I'm not sure, it almost has a bit of a borderline like off-white, like a washed out white. Um, so I, I didn't want to go with that one. So we've gone uh, Arctic Grey, which looks very dark in this configure. Again, this configurator does no justice to the color whatsoever. Um, in fact, let's make that a little bit bigger. This is probably as close to Nardo as it gets. Um, and if you know your colors, and Porsche color specifically, you'll know that this was actually the GT4 RS launch color. So um, I'll quickly bring up some pictures for that now. Yeah, so if I bring this up here, you can see it's got like a, a blue hue to it in some lights, but in full sun, you can see, I mean, it's practically Nardo. Um, this is a brand new color for model year 23. Um, and so there's not currently any on the road, I believe, that are in this color. I mean, some orders might start filtering through, um, but currently there are no cars with this color that I'm aware of. So um, I just think it looks mega. Yes, okay, of course, it's gonna look naturally better on the GT4 RS, but um, I loved it. And I, I was very lucky while I was uh, at the main dealer to see a, I think it's a Cayenne Turbo GT, basically the new rare one with the titanium gold exhaust tips and wheels and stuff. Um, and it was in this Arctic gray. So we were able to go outside and see it in person. Um, it is a flat color, it doesn't have a fleck in it. Um, but I just loved how in the shade, it looked a little bit blue. Um, and in full sun, it was basically Nardo. And Nardo, I feel like is like my color now, especially after the RS3, so yeah. We've gone with it. Do you like it? Should I have picked a different color? Um, uh, carmine red, not really for me. Um, again, crayon's too light. Um, you've got python green, which uh, I feel like if you're gonna get python green, you should put it on a GT4, not a GTS. So, but I mean, it looks incredible. I know that the launch car in the UK, when the 4.0 first come out, I know they did it in this python green and it looks, it looks mega, but for, other spec options, you'll see why I didn't want to go that colour in a minute. But yeah, so we'll whack on Arctic Grey. When it comes to wheels, these are the standard ones, 20 inch 718 Sport wheels, they come in satin black. You've got the 911 Turbo wheels and you also have the Carrera Sport wheels, which I'm not really a fan of, don't really like the Turbo wheels, quite happy with the standard ones. You can get them painted. Um, if you go for black high gloss, you'll see if I select this, it then wants to add the Carrera wheels, which I, as I just said, I'm not really a fan of. So um, yeah, we're just gonna leave them sat in black for now. You could also get them in gold, but I've seen them in person. They're a little bit wild. They, I think it's like supposed to be a bronze, but they're very gold. Um, and I, I prefer a bit of a darker bronze. So we're gonna, we're gonna just leave them sat in black. Oh, interior. <laughs> so, if you've watched some previous RS3 videos, you'll know that I was hell bent on getting the, I think it's crescendo red stitch with the sports seats, um, just because it lifts the interior massively um, and makes it much more of an event when you get in. So, there's probably quite a desired option for these GTSs, and it's the GTS interior pack. And you can have it either with uh, black and crayon stitch, or you can have it with carmine red. So we'll just look at what the crayon looks like. We'll add that on. Um, so you can see here that your rev gauge uh, is crayon, you've got stitch, uh, you get the carbon inlays, you get some leather door cards, the dash becomes leather. It's just very nice, it makes it very plush. Uh, cabin and I, I was a big big fan but yeah I mean in red <laughs> it just looks uh, ridiculous and of course that means you get the red belts they would be crayon in the other pack um, and the GTS embroidered headrest is in red as well um, and I mean as, as interiors go I mean of course you get the carbon as well all of this is carbon the center console um, and actually on the door cards as well just looks unreal, absolutely unreal. So yeah, this steering wheel is Alcantara um, and the stitch in here will be red as well. Um, so just kind of matches and of course the floor mats as well. So yeah, I just think the red is, is much more exciting. 
Let's see what you've gone with that. Um, seats. Um, so, as lovely as these four buckets are, uh, they're the same ones uh, that are in the GT4, the GT3, um, and the 918. They are lovely, but this is my daily car. And after getting in my friend James's RS4 with the wingback buckets, the bolster on your thigh when you get in uh, was a bit of a pain in the ass. So I, I just, the sport seats were pl plenty fine. I drove one with just the two-way electric, more than sufficient. I don't even have electric seats now, so I, I wasn't worried about wasting money on, on that. Uh, and then we moved down to some more individual options. So you've got exterior. So by standard, these black trim inserts here around the, the lower spoiler, the, the kind of like front apron um, and this rear diffuser all in like a satin plastic. Um, you can add for this to be gloss black, which I've done, which again, I feel like makes a huge difference to the exterior of the car, especially around the front. So this is all now nice and gloss especially this little front split here. No doubt I'll probably whack that on something and want to die, but it's what it is. Um, so I'm just looking at my spec sheet. So the next one, um, you can get things like headlight cleaning system, paint covers painted, but you can't have that and the sport design pack. So that is what it is. Um, what is the next one that I had? I had, so door handles in black, I've kept them body colored. Get rid of that. Uh, Porsche logo in satin black. So at the moment it comes chrome, a standard. I've blacked that out. Yeah, so I decided to black that out. So that's now got rid of the chrome on the back of the car, which looks much better as far as I'm concerned. Drive, train and chassis, <laughs> contentious point of discussion. Um, I want to preface by saying that the manual car was the best manual I have ever driven. And I'm not really a massive manual fan. This car in a manual was another level. Second gear was very long, as everyone has said in their reviews, and we'll, we'll get to that when I film one. Um, but the PDK was just excellent. I mean, the DSG and the RS3 is amazing, but uh, the PDK was outrageous. The other thing as well is because I'm like five foot, the, uh, the way that the dash is angled, I felt like I had to be really close to the steering wheel in order to be able to fully depress the clutch, which was a little bit uncomfortable. So had that have not been the case, maybe I would have gone with the manual, but yeah, for now we've gone with uh, the PDK. Uh, PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management with ride height low by 10 mil. It's free, so it's going on. <laughs> uh, I did Power Steering Plus. Not bothered with uh, carbon ceramic brakes because they are a fortune to replace and I'm, it's not going to be a regular track car. Um, you know, for road use, it's just not necessary. And I've left the calipers in red. So from as far as external goes, although saying that, we'll quickly add the lights on as well that I've added. Um, for me, this was just a must. I've got a weird thing about daytime running lights. I just think these look incredible. Um, so yeah, we've gone with the upgraded LED main headlights. Um, so from an external point of view, this is what it will look like. Um, and I am obsessed, <laughs> absolutely obsessed. I absolutely love it. Um, what do you think? Do you like it? Um, should I have picked another color? The nice thing is with this, if I change my mind on spec, which I can, um, I have plenty of time to be able to play around with specs. So if you've got any other suggestions or you don't like this, or you think I should have picked something different, leave me a comment. Uh, below and I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it but yeah just moving on to some of the other options so light design package is ambient lighting which again I have in my RS3 so you get it in the overhead console door handles door storage compartments footwells and the vanity mirrors in the sun vanity mirrors in the sun visors so we've added that um, I have added auto demi mirrors and integrated rain sensor I haven't bothered adding the folding mirrors because the RS3 has folding mirrors and when I come to clean the car, they always the car always locks itself and so the mirrors fold in. So when I want to try and clean it, it's a pain to like get your hand around them. It's just yeah, hold ordeal. So we didn't bother with that. Rear wiper, no, absolutely not. Park assist, front and rear. Um, so this gives you sensors in the front and rear. 
um, and a reversing camera. I have a camera in the RS3 and I rely on it massively. It's actually borderline a little bit of a problem now. Um, so we added that. Um, I didn't bother adding entry and drive. It's just basically like keyless entry. Um, this was, I mean, this is the type of stuff that should come on a 69,000 pound car. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't. So I didn't bother adding two zone climate because it's such a small cabin. It's just not necessary. It's £539, which I'd much rather have £539 worth of options of other things. So didn't bother with that. I did, however, add the heated multifunction steering wheel. So um, by standard, they don't come. In fact, let me make this bigger. These buttons on the steering wheel are not there. Um, just your race car <laughs> um, they're not there so by adding the heated steering wheel means you get the button so it's handy for the phone for volume and yeah just flicking through this uh, digital screen on the dash there so we've added that um, what else did we add uh, didn't change any of the seat belts or the dials interior lever I left alone oh audio communication so I've added both as well um, and I think Oh, and passenger footwell storage net. It's not in leather. Where is that? Passenger. Where would that be? There we go. It's just a net. Um, I don't, I'm not even really sure if you can see that. It's so dark. Um, there's a little storage net in here. Um, just if you want to add some more stuff because there's not a ton of storage in there. Um, and that, I believe, is my spec. So again, what do you think? Now, this is gonna take the best part of 12 months to arrive. Long, 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 long time. Um, and it is a big, big step up from cost in terms of the RS3, but it was incredible. And I, I can't think of any better car than this at this kind of price point. I mean, you could buy like, okay, all right, at this kind of money, you could buy, I don't know, a used R8. I don't really want another Audi. Um, I only really like the RS3. I've, I've driven a Gen 2 R8 and um, personally, I thought it was a little bit boring. So again, potentially unpopular opinion, but I feel like it was a little bit boring, especially compared to the RS3. Um, so that was that was never gonna be in contention. And yeah, I just, like bearing in mind, this is gonna be my daily car as well, like my only car. Um, I wouldn't want to go for anything crazy. I love the GT4, um, but you cannot walk in as a first time buyer at Porsche and just order a GT4. It's just not how their allocations work. So um, even if I wanted one, even if I was willing to stretch even further to go to a GT4, I'm not gonna get an allocation for one anyway. Um, but this was a happy medium. And it's, for those of you that don't know, it is the same engine and gearbox uh, as what's in the GT4. It's just slightly detuned, um, 400 horsepower, I think the 0 to 60 times in the PDK is like four seconds flat. So it's, yeah, it's quick. Um, and the level of grip in this car, given that it's rear wheel drive was mental. Again, I don't want to say too much because we're going to do a full review, but um, yeah, I'm very, very happy. It was a bit emotional actually, because this is bar our house, like the most expensive <laughs> purchase I've ever made. Um, but yeah, very proud moment to be, even be considering one of these. Um, and now we've just got a very long wait for it. So yeah, by all means, let me know in the comments below what you think of the spec. Um, would you have changed anything? Would you have done anything differently? Do you like the Arctic Grey? Um, yeah, just let me know. I wanna hear what you guys think. And actually some of you might spark my decision on spec choice anyway. Um, but at the moment, <laughs> at the moment at least, this is uh, what I've got locked in and what I'm, what I'm happy with. Now regards to the RS3, the RS3 is still here. Um, there's still a few more videos I want to film the RS3. I'm not sure uh, when I will sell it. I'll either keep hold of it for the remainder of the 12 months and then get rid of it just before this arrives. Um, or like I said in, in the, is it the time to sell video? Like if, if someone's willing to pay me really good money for it, um, you know, really good money for it, then uh, I would happily sell it now and, and you can have it. So yeah, that is the video. Let me know what you guys think stop the screen recording um let me know what you guys think and um yeah i'll see you soon for another video like i said i think the next video after this one will be 
the R56 Mini we've got. Uh, and then maybe the one after that will be driving this. It's either gonna be this or a dyno of the RS3. So there'll be some coming soon, but yeah, if you liked it guys, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe um, and yeah, we'll see you soon.